What's up, Ocean? You got Matt here. Today I'm going to do a tier list ranking the best items in competitive Pokemon. Let's do it. Just a reminder, guys, you should subscribe if you are interested in more tier list videos and more Pokemon competitive content anyways. Let's go ahead and get started. Looking at the first item over here, it is the Absorb Bulb. Now, those of you who don't know, the Absorb Bulb, I should probably pull up a showdown here to make sure I have everything taken into consideration. The Absorb Bulb, it increases your special attack by one stage if you're hit by a water type Pokemon, and it's a single use item, meaning that once you use it, it's gone for good. There's a lot of items like that. So the Absorb Bulb to me, water is a very common type that you really deal with, but honestly, it's really not used very often. I'm not going to say it's a really bad item. I'm going to say it's more like C tiers because it's not absolutely insane like the S tiers, A tiers, or even just usable in the B tiers. I think it's a bit below usable. So there's the Adrenaline Orb. Again, Adrenaline Orb is really good, mostly on special attackers, because what it does is if you're a victim of Intimidate, then it'll boost your speed stat by one stage, which is super useful in some situations, especially against Pokemon that really have a lot of intim or teams rather that have a lot of Intimidate. So I'd say the Adrenaline Orb probably goes up here in the B tier. Moving on though, this is the Agua Berry, if I'm not mistaken. And the Agua Berry is going to be just basically any of the super recovery berries. The one that used to be the 50% berries and are now known as the 33% berries. So this one here, Agua, it confuses you with your minus special defense, which most of the time you're not going to be that unless you're like a naive nature or something like that, or a rash nature, I believe are the two that are minus spadef. These are very common items to see, especially in VGC, a bit less so in, in standard draft league. So because of that, I'm going to put it in B tier. The Air Balloon. Air Balloon is super underrated. A tier. All the time you'll expect a Scarf Ground type or a Banded Ground type to come in and they're just going to click Earthquake or they're going to click Earth Power. And with the Air Balloon, you can avoid that. It is a single use item, which is not great, but it's still better than just being muted, just right away, automatically gone to basically any type of Ground type attack, which is again, not good. You can have a team that's really weak to ground type attacks and air balloon can kind of help you with that. I do believe it's an A tier item. That is for sure. Anything that grants you an immunity like this does should be pretty high on the list. After this, we have the, I don't even know what berry this is. I think it's the Chesto berry if I'm not mistaken. I feel so dumb. That's the, actually the Aspier berry. The Aspier berry, I'm going to put it right away in D tier. Aspier berry prevents you from being frozen or once you are frozen, it thaws you out. And again, that could be useful in certain situations, but freeze is like a 10% chance. I'm not going to bank everything on a 10% chance. It's just not going to happen. So Aspie Berry, D tier, there's basically any other item to run. Basically, that's it. Any item you can run is better than the Aspie Berry in most cases. Next up, the Assault Vest. You guys know this item. This item is a really, really good item. I'm going to put it all the way up in S tier, for the time being at least. Assault Vest, what it does is increases your special, special defense rather by one stage, but at the cost of only, using only attacking moves. So no Roost, no recovery options outside of like Drain Punch, or I guess parabolic charge or whatever the case is going to be, but it's so good in certain situations that you really can't pass it up a lot of the times. And it makes Pokemon that would be two killed or three killed in certain situations just be able to take the hits for days, which is really, really nice and super useful on Pokemon that have a really high HP stat. Next up, we have Berry Juice. Now, if this was level 50 or level 100, Berry Juice is D tier. If this is going to be Little Cup, it's going to be S tier. But because of that, I'm going to put it in C tier because Little Cup is just less popular than standard 5v5 is, or standard 6v6 rather, at level 50 or 100. So again, we'll put it at C tier, but again, if this is level 50, 100, whatever it's going to be, it's D tier. But because we're averaging it out, we'll, we'll say C tier. Next up, this is the big root. C tier, okay. And like bottom of C tier. Um, actually, no, we'll put Berry Juice just below that. The reason why this is so low is because basically what it does is it increases the amount of recovery you're going to get when you go for like a leech seed or a uh, drain punch or something like that that recovers back HP, which again can have its uses. I just don't think it's necessarily going to be better than a lot, a lot of other items in certain situations. You're probably better off running like the leftovers unless you're getting a lot of Okos with your energy recovering moves. So I just find that having this there just doesn't do as much as you really want it to do. Next up, we have the Binding Band. This is the, this is the Binding Band, I believe. Binding, yeah, that is the Binding Band. So what it does is it increases the trapping move damage. Instead of being 1 8th, it's 1 16th, which has its utility. But again, I feel like in certain situations when you want to run a trapping move, trapping move like Whirlpool or something, or Wrap, you don't want to run Binding Band. So I'm going to put it in the D tier. Just, you really don't want, you know what, no. It's, it's not unplayable. I think there are certain situations where, certain situations where you might want to do it. I just think that those situations come up so, so rarely. I'm going to put it over here in the D tier. Black Sludge. Basically leftovers, just fewer poison types in the game. And in reality, the poison types can run leftovers. The real reason why they don't do that is in case of like Trick or Switcheroo. So I'll put it in A tier. I don't really see it being anything more than that. Next up, this is the Blunder Policy. 
Blunder policy has so many cool uses. Addison, Aquarius, recently showed me a Blunder policy registeel set she ran with like Zap Cannon, Iron Head, uh, I don't know, Iron Defense rather, Body Press, and one other move. And this set was meant to then outspeed things after the Blunder policy or just get the paralysis, which would have been super cool. So I'm going to put it up in B tier. I think it has utility. It has utility on Gengar as well. I've used it on Gengar in the past. I think it's super, super nice. You just got to be really careful with what you're going to be clicking the move against because most of the time missing the move is still worse than actually hitting it. So just be careful with that. After that, we have the Bright Powder. This Bright Powder, honestly, most of the time it's banned uh, in competitive leagues because you don't want to rely on like a 5%, 10% chance to just lose the game because of an, of an item. I think it's kind of ridiculous. Um, but if it was allowed, I'd probably say it's like C tier. But because it's usually banned, I'm going to put it into the D tier, but above Aspire Berry because Aspire Berry is just kind of really battery, really bad. Uh, I was getting a bit ahead of myself. I said battery there, and this is because we have the cell battery up next. And the cell battery, it boosts your attack by one stage if you're hit by an electric type attack, and then single use. I'm going to put this all the way up here, same place as the absorb bulb. Again, they have their utility, just not super, super useful in a lot of situations. So I'm going to put it over there. The cherry berry. Cherry berry actually has a lot of usefulness. If you really are okay with being poisoned or burnt, then you can definitely run a cherry berry in. And because of that, I'm going to put it into the B tier. I personally have run cherry berries. I personally run petcha berries. I personally run rost berries because those specific statuses are really, really bad in some situations. So having the one berry to kind of prevent that is super nice. I'm okay being, being burnt on my special attacker, but I really don't want to be paralyzed. So having this item here prevents that. It's super nice. Chesto berry, higher up. Resto chesto, super good to recover back a lot of HP and then start breaking again or start taking multiple hits. Very good item. This here is the chillan berry. Now, the chillan berry I'm putting here, I believe, instead of all the other berries, all the other resist berries, um, the chillan berry usually is for normal type attacks. I'm going to put it as a super recovery berry in general, all of them, because I believe I didn't put those on here. Yeah, I didn't. Oh, no, I put them down at the bottom with the yachi berry. Chillan berry specifically is just for normal type attacks, so excuse me there. Chillan berry will basically make so normal type moves are unaffected, and it's a really good item in certain situations. I'm actually going to put it at the bottom of B tier. I find that having chillan berry as an option makes that normal spam with like double edge or hyper voice or boom burst or whatever is not going to be as threatening. So having a chill and berry here can make a lot of Pokemon that would be two a KO'd into three a KO'd and allow you to really win a game or bring a game back because of that if normal type Pokemon are that big of a problem. Think of like Scrappy x -Cloud. That Pokemon is so hard to switch into. With a chill and berry, you can do it. Next up, the choice items. Let's just, let's just make it easy for everyone. S tier. S tier, S tier, S tier. The best one, number one I'd rank would be Choice Scarf. I believe it's actually better than the, the Assault Vest. The other two are probably a bit lower, that's for sure. Just having the extra boost in speed is so damn nice. It's such a good stat to have a boost in. So I find having the speed stat is much more important than the boost in your attack or special attack. Now what this does though, it boosts that stat by one stage while you're holding the item only, but it locks you into a certain move. And it's really good in certain situations. Like if you're going for a U-turns a bunch of times, you're going for like a sludge wave with a Gengar or whatever with your choice specs, you're going with like, I don't know, an earthquake with your Landorus while you're choice banded. It can be really, really overpowering. But you have to remember, you can only lock yourself into that one move. You need to switch out before switching it up, and you can be taken advantage of in those in those positions. So be careful with what you're locking into. Next up, we have the Damp Rock. This is all of the rocks, okay? The Weather Rock. I'm going to put them at A tier. I'll put it below the Chesto Berry. I do think this item... You know what? Yeah, A tier is where it's going to belong. Because Weather Teams really rely on these rocks. Having a rock with like Pelipper or Politoed or, or Hippowdon or Titar is so, so nice. So I feel like having these weather rocks, anything lower than A tier, would be basically saying that weather teams are just not good at all. And that's not true. Weather teams have their usefulness. If you don't have a team that's built to be able to specifically beat some weather Pokemon, then you're going to have a hard time against them. Something with like Cloud9, Prankster with, with a Rain Dance or Sunny Day or whatever, just something like that, it makes it hard to be able to beat your opponent down. So I like having weather rocks in the A tier here. Next up, this is the Eject button. Now eject button, I'm gonna make sure I'm not mixing this mixing up with a red card, red card, but eject button, yeah. So if you're if you survive the hits, you are switched out. Okay, which is super, super useful because you can take a hit from something and then get into a better matchup after that, which can be really useful. You can take a hit with your Registeel against a Pokemon like a, a ghost type Pokemon, like a Spectre, and then get into your dark type just in case they're going to go for an attack that might cripple you or something, or like a hex, and you're in range of it. It's a really good way to break through Pokemon and prevent some really bad situations. All that being said though, I'm still gonna say B tier. Okay, I don't think it's necessarily that good. I think it's better than basically all these other items in the B tier, but it's still not one of the top of the top line. Eject pack, A tier. This is the best of the items like that in my eyes. And the reason for that is because you can go for an attack, like close combat, like Draco Meteor, and get momentum out of that, which is huge. That way you don't have to worry about your lowered stat. It's super, super good. 
and at the same time, your opponent is likely going to switch into a Pokemon to take that hit. What wants to take a Latios' Draco Meteor? Very little, except for like a Fairy type or a Steel type. Well, if your opponent goes into their Steel type and you drop a Draco on them, then you switch out into your, po your, into your check for them. It's a really good way to start off the game. Just fantastic. Honestly, a Jackpack Magearna, super scary. I was the victim to it once, and uh, honestly, I don't want to be the victim to it again. It is that, that scary. Next up here, we have the seeds. Now, not all the seeds, we have one of the seeds. I want to separate them because they're very different. Electric Seed, if I'm not mistaken, boosts your defense, if I'm correct. Yeah, it boosts your defense by one stage while you're in Electric Terrain. So you go into Electric Terrain, you pop it, and boom, you're all set. This is very commonly used with Coco or I guess with Pincurchin. So I'm gonna say overall, it's a B tier item. When it's used with a team that has the ability to run the Electric Seed, it's very strong because it can pop something like the Unburden for something like a Halucha or something like a Hitmonlee. In general though, it's just not a good item unless you're in those really specific niche situations. Meanwhile, everything else in, in A tier and S tier is a lot more common, I find, than something like the Electric Terrain boosted seed. I guess I can say the same thing. I'll do the other seeds right now. Grassy Seed, I would put probably at the bottom of a B tier. Um, grassy Seed is just not as good in my eyes. It boosts your defense as well, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it's just not as good. Yeah, it's another defense boost, which is again, fine. I just don't find it to be as good. There is the Psychic Seed though, and the Misty Seed. This one here is the Misty Seed. I'll put over here as well. I'll put towards this range over here, which is really good, especially on Tapu Fini itself. I find that Tapu Fini with Misty Seed can allow you to set up really easily because it gets ways to boost its physical defense on top of the special defense that Misty Seed would provide. Then there's the Psychic Seed, which is good to deal with Pokemon because Lele is so hard to switch into. I would actually put a bit higher than the other ones, but not as high as Electric Seed. I think that having a way to take these special hits from Lele and getting this boost is super nice against Pokemon that may be want to come and take a Specs attack. This is one way that you can really do so. Next up, a Violite. S tier. Again, probably I put it higher than the other choice items. This item is so damn good. It makes Pokemon like your Porygon 2 viable. It makes Pokemon like, what else am I thinking of? There's a lot of Pokemon. Uh, I want to say Sneasel, but not Sneasel, that's for sure. There's a lot of Pokemon that are not fully evolved, that are just so damn good because they have access to the Violet. Think of something like Clefairy. Clefairy is one of the most underrated draft league Pokemon, and it's really so good because it has access to the Violet, making it almost as bulky as Clefable, which is actually insane. On top of that, you have other really good Pokemon that are just low, I guess, tiered, like Reboot, which may not be more offensive, but can take hits because they have the ability to switch up their, their typing because of Libero, and then be defensive enough to take hits because of the uh, Violet. Super good, but again, obviously a lot of other Pokemon. Chansey as an example as well is really common there. Next up, this here is the Expert Belt. Now, Expert Belt is really good. I'm gonna put it at the top of A tier for now. I may come back to it and put it at the top at the bottom of S tier, but it's a really good item. No downside in terms of your, your stats, no downside in terms of a drop in attack, no downside in terms of a, a weakening of your HP. This item, as long as you're hitting things for super effective damage, will do 1.2 times the power, which is really, really good. I find this to be one of the better items out here, just maybe not good enough to crack the S tier ranks. Flame Orb. Flame Orb will go into B tier, okay? You know what? No, Flame Orb will go into C tier. Reason for that is it's so niche. You have to have a Pokemon with like Flare Boost, with Guts, or with like Magic Arts, or whatever to really take use of it. So I'm gonna put it at C tier, about the top of C tier in this in this situation. Next up, this here, this item. Maybe you don't know what this is. This is the Floatstone. The Floatstone. I'm gonna pull up the exact definition of it here, so you guys can have an apt description. The holder's weight is halved. That comes up really useful in situations where you're dealing with like. Opposing low kick, um, you want to, I don't know, low kick is the main thing, really, honestly. Low kick is the main thing. And because of that, I'm going to put it into D tier. If someone has a matchup that they've used Floatstone in and it's worked, send it to me. I'm all ears, but I don't think that's going to be that good in a situation like this. This here is the Focus Band. The Focus Band gives you a 10% chance to take a hit. It'll survive on 1%, doesn't matter what HP you're at. It happens one time and then it's burnt. I'm going to put it at the bottom of C tier. It is hardly ever used, and most leagues it's banned. I'm going to put it in C tier though because there is that one chance, that one chance where it saves you the game. And I guess, you know what, based on that logic, Bright Powder should be up there as well. I just think that missing is like really bad, and you can still bring a Pokemon down to 1 HP with this, which could be really useful. Compared to missing outright can just really end the game right away. Moving on, Focus Sash. 
Focus Sash will go S, will go A tier. I wouldn't put it S tier. Um, not everything can use it. It's very rare that you want to see. I want to make sure I have a Sash intact. It's there for like a lead. It's there in case your opponent has no way to get rid of hazards. It's there for like Alakazams or Sigilus, which have Magic Guard and they're pretty frail, can just die to one hit. And you want to make sure you get a second attack off. So that's really the main focus there. Focus Sash, really good item, just not super useful on many different teams. And that's why I'm going to put it in the A tier. And honestly, and the more I'm looking at this, I'm going to put Air Balloon a bit lower. But honestly, there's a pretty big jump between these two items over here and the rest of the bottom five in the eight tier. Next up is Grip Claw. Now, Grip Claw. Grip Claw, instead of making your trapping moves last for five turns, it makes them last for seven turns, which has its usefulness for moves like Wrap or Whirlpool. And you can honestly run them when you're running like a Whirlpool Parish Song set or a Whirlpool Toxic set or whatever. It has its usefulness. So I do believe that honestly, this poke, this set here would be in the seats here. I put it a bit higher than the uh, the big root and the binding band, but not much higher. Heat Rock. Rain is better than, well, sun is. So because of that, right away, it has to go lower. Ice Rock. Lower. And there should be one more. Where's the Smooth Rock? Smooth Rock. The best weather in the game is the rain. Second is sand. Then I'd say it's... In terms of Pokemon, it's definitely going to be the five, like the sun, uh, sun. But honestly, I'd see, I say Hail is a bit better. So I'm going to put these two in the A tier. I'm going to put the other two in the B tier. I just don't believe that they're as good. And there, there's a clear decline between the Damp Rock, the, the Smooth Rock, and the Heat Rock, and the Icy Rock. Boots. In contention for the best item in the game. It is one of the few items that is in contention for the best item in the game, period. Being immune to any hazard, rocks, spikes, toxic spikes, webs, whatever, you are good to go. And it's super useful. It makes Pokemon like Moltres so much better. It makes Pokemon like Incineroar able to come in and spread its Intimidate and spread its, its parting shots and U-turns all over the place much more viable. But it also makes Pokemon that are not weak to rocks like Coco or Slowbro so much better. It is one of the best items in the game, arguably the number one item in the game. Moving on, we have the Iron Ball here. Now, Iron Ball and Lagging Tail, those are two very different. Iron Ball, it cuts your, ha your, your, your speed in half, but it also makes it so that you're grounded, meaning that flying type moves, or sorry, not flying type moves, ground type attacks will always hit you and do neutral damage and makes it so flying types stay off the ground or on the ground rather. In general, I would say this thing has a lot of utility, mostly as trick or as fling material. And for that reason, it's going to go into C tier. Um, it has utility, but again, C tier is where it's going to stay. This item over there, I believe that is the key berry. I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, that is the key berry. This is the physical attack increase berry. Basically, it's kind of like a, a, a pseudo cell battery or absorb bulb in a way. But if you're hit by any physical attack, it boosts your defense by one stage, which is really good. It and the Moranga Berry are both very, very similar. The Moranga Berry is lower down the list. So Key Berry and Moranga Berry have their utility. I'm going to put them at the C tier, but really high up in the C tier. I think they're both really good items to have access to in the Draft League metagame. You really want to make sure you have access to these things because if you're dealing with a Pokemon that can just 2 kill everything and you want to take the second hit, then Key Berry or Moranga Berry can really save you in a lot of situations, which is really, really nice. And then makes you can take multiple attacks, especially if it's a Pokemon with like Softball to Recover or Roost. So I think these items are really solid in a lot of situations. Lagging Tail. Lagging Tail, I think, is a bit better than Iron Ball. Iron Ball, essentially, what it does is it cuts your speed in half. Lagging Tail makes, makes it so that you always move last in the priority bracket, which means that it doesn't matter if you're a million base speed. If you go with the exact same move, you guys, if you guys both go for Explosion, you will explode second because you move last in the priority bracket. So really important to note there. And it can make things that are usually really fast really, really slow. It also doesn't work under Trick Room, which is something to note. If you're going for Trick Room, you're better off running the Ironing Ball, the Iron Ball, because it's going to cut your speed in half rather than make you move last in the priority bracket. Because again, you're still in the same priority bracket when you're under Trick Room, you just move first because you're slower. This is different in Lagging Tail. Moving on, Leftovers, another S tier item, probably again in contention for the best items in the game. Really, really good. I think this item is so underrated. People just say, you know what, Leftovers, let's try it again. It is an underrated item. Everyone respects it, knows it's good, but people are like, yeah, there's Boots, which is good, Scarf is probably better, you know, there's there's the Violite, there's the Boots, there's just whatever item. Leftovers is really, really good. 6% recovery is great. You can also kind of do a Leftovers number, which essentially is make sure you're getting the most out of your Leftovers recovery every single turn. So what you're going to do to do that, you're going to take your HP investment, your HP stats, 
you're going to divide it by 16 and then add one to it. So what you want to do is you want to have a leftovers number that is divisible by 16 exactly plus one. That is going to maximize as much recovery as you get. At the same time, it's going to make so that you have an odd HP stat so that you can take less damage from rocks or spikes or whatever. If you want a guide on how to do all these crazy investments and stuff, I have a video on that. It's going to be in the top right of your screen in the cards. Next up, Lepa Berry. Lepa Berry has its usefulness, but there's like endless battle clauses. Just don't make a game go on forever. It could have its usefulness in like Pokemon moves that are like five PP points. D tier though. It's really just not going to be super useful. I'm going to put it down below here. And honestly, the more I'm looking at this, this, S, this C tier is looking kind of crowded. There's a lot of really bad items that are never going to be used. I should probably just, you know what? No, this, this item is never going to be used. This item is never going to be used. This item is never going to be used in, in singles, in level fit, in level 50 and everything. And this item, of course, is usually banned. So I'm going to put it down here as well. And honestly, so is this one here. So we're going to keep this over here. D tier is getting filled up now. Life Orb. If Expert Belt is A, Life Orb has to be S. Life Orb is a better item in like 90% of cases. Okay, unless you really need to be able to take two hits, Life Orb is usually better. Having a 1.2% increase in your, or 1.2 times increase in your attack, but only for super effective attacks is nice. Having a 1.3% or 1.3 times increase on all of your attacks is even better. There is the downside 10%, but you can mitigate against that, which is really useful. There's also Pokemon that have like Magic Guard or have abilities like Sheer Force, which you are going to take Life Orb damage, which is really, really nice. I think it's a really good item and it's super underutilized. I honestly would put it higher than the other choice items, to be honest, but lower than everything else. I do think it's really good. Like this, this item is really close to S tier still, but just Life Orb is a bit higher up. And that's why I put it in the S tier, in the S tier slot. Light Ball. Light Ball is so good for Pikachu and Pikachu alone. So for Pikachu, it's S tier. For everything else, it's D tier. All right, it's D tier because it's only for one Pokemon. This next item, the Light Clay. The Light Clay is an A tier item. I'm gonna put A tier, I'll put it above the Black Sludge because you can have a, you can have a game and you can flip it upside down completely just by having access to the Light Clay, allowing you to be able to then take multiple hits because you have seven, eight turns of screens compared to just four or five is so damn nice. Having this support for your team allows you to just win a game when you have no business of winning, honestly. It can make a team, a Pokemon, that would take normally 52% from something, take only 25, 26. And that's going to be changing the game, allowing it to set up, allowing it to go for a game where you can't do anything about it. It is such a good item to have on Pokemon like a Prankster Screens, a Pokemon like a Screens in general, Aurora Veil, whatever. Very good item. The Lumberry. The Lumberry is the best of the items of the berries in my eyes. I'm going to put it above the Chesto Berry. This makes you immune to any single status, any status, even confusion. But you can't pick and choose. You can't pick and choose like the Chesto Berry because if you run rest with a lumberry then if you get burnt on a scald by accident well then you click scald after or recover after not recover rest after then it doesn't do you any good reason for that is because if you're going for that you're going to then be wasting your your recovery berry on a burn which is useless to you it doesn't matter to you because you're going to recover anyway so again you want to pick and choose go with the individual berries you want to just have a blanket cover use the lumberry Next up, the Luminescent Moss. I'm gonna make sure it's the Luminescent Moss. Yeah, the Luminous Moss, excuse me. This one boosts your special defense if you're hit by a water type attack. So really good if you're a Pokemon that can't be burnt and you're trying to take Skull. Really nice here. Uh, or if you don't care being burnt at all and you want the special defense boost. Majority of the time, majority of the time, Moranga Berry is gonna be better. So I'm gonna put this down below as the worst of the items for the uh, one-time attack move. This here is a Savali Memory. I'm gonna put it in B tier. So Valley is so good. And Light Ball is in D tier because it's a signature item and it's only good for one Pokemon, which is the same thing, I guess, for the drives or the memories, whatever you wanna call them. I personally believe that So Valley is one of the most underrated Pokemon out there. And having access to any type you want to fix your team up is better than having a really broken ass item like Light Ball is on a Pokemon like Pikachu. So I would highly recommend looking at the So Valley types as one of your Pokemon in a draft league team. Next up, the Mental Herb. This thing actually has a lot of utility. And it was a, an item that I was really worried about in one of my latest runs in the BBL. I was super worried about Mental Herb Zekrom because of potentially Encore. So I have to be really, really careful about that. And honestly, because of that, it's gonna, again, my respect, it's gonna go into the B tier, okay? Power Herb, I'll skip to go to Power Herb because they're similar. I'm also gonna put it into the, uh, yeah, I'm gonna put it into the B tier, but I'm gonna put it higher into the B tier, okay? 
Um, doesn't necessarily go number one, probably not, but in general, it's a really, really good item to have in the B tier because getting Power Herb Meteor Beam, Power Herb Bounce, or Power Herb whatever is so, so strong. And Meteor Beam is like the, the move for Power, for power Herb now. You get the boost in your special attack right away, and you attack right away, and you can start sweeping right away. Very, very strong item to have access to. Metronome. Super underutilized. I'm going to put it low A tier or high B tier, one of the two. Uh, honestly, I'd probably say high B tier, actually, because most of the time you can try, try running like a soft sand or something if you're going to be clicking uh, Earthquake all the time. The first two hits will actually do more than the first and the second hit combined of Metronome. So you want to make sure that you're actually always going to be doing the right amount of damage. So it's really good for later on in the game, not necessarily for early on in the game. That's really the main focus with Metronome. So that's why I'm going to put it at the B tier. This is the Muscle Band. Muscle Band and Wise Lens or whatever they're called, or Wise Glasses, I'm putting as low B tier. I have Life Orb at 1.3 times power here. I have Expert Belt as 1.2 times power here, okay? There are a lot of other items. I believe I have one of them over here. I'm just trying to find one of them, which is like the boosting item for regular old attacks, like a soft sand or something. And for some reason, I can't find. I knew I had it over here somewhere. But regardless, those ones I'd put in the A tier, all of them. But these two, they're not even as strong as that. Why on earth would I do that? It just makes no sense. The boost in power is so, so pointless. 1.1% is nothing. It really is nothing. Unless it guarantees you a 2 echo that you weren't getting before, why bother? There's really no reason to. So bottom of B tier for these two items here. Honestly, they're, they're definitely better than the, uh, the, the these things individually because you can use them on more teams, but I'll put them in, in B tier nonetheless. The gems, specifically the only one available, which is normal gem. Normal gem is B tier. Again, very solid item to have access to. It's a one-time use. Actually, no, no, I'm putting it C tier. It's so rarely used. has some utility, but so very little. I'm going to put it this low. Petra Berry. Petra Berry is nice specifically for poisons if you want to avoid toxics, just like the, the Cherry Berry is avoiding the paralysis and the Chesto Berry is avoiding, avoiding sleep. I do think that having the poison, most of the time you're going to be using the, the Lum Berry most of the time. But honestly, I'm going to put it in B tier because I've been in situations where I want to run Petra Berry to be immune to the poison because poison is what's scary not the burn because I'm running a special attacker, for example, or I'm a bulky Pokemon with special attacks. So yeah, protective pads. Really, really good on certain Pokemon. Sinsinu, or Shifu Rapid Strike, all these Pokemon really good on those things, especially Pokemon teams when you have a lot of like uh, Ruskin or Rocky Helmets or Iron Barbs or whatever. I'm gonna put it into B tier. I'm gonna put it higher up than the, uh, the individual rocks here. Um, I'll probably put it higher up, yeah, than, uh, than Power Herb, honestly. These are really, really good items. This here is the Rost Berry. Rost to me is the worst of the berries here. I'll put it in the D T and C tier rather. Uh, the burn is okay. Obviously only good on physical attackers, but like everything else is okay on any type of attacker. Physical special, doesn't matter. This one here, specifically for physical attackers, which we're really worrying about. The red card. Red card is similar to the eject button. The reason why red card to me is better than the eject button is because if you can survive a hit with endure or something, let's say you're really worried about like a Dragon Dance Mew or something like that and you want to take an attack, an Earthquake from Dragon Dance Me or a Psychic Dance or whatever, you can take the hit because of your, of your red card and then get that thing out of there, which is super nice to have access to in situations, okay? It also helps out force a lot of switches to deal with spikes or rocks or webs. You can be in a really good spot because of the red card. I think red card in general is a really underutilized item that should see a lot more play. Ring target. Ring target is only good if you're planning to trick it away, and because of that, I'm going to put it low, low C tier. I've seen it do work once, and it did a lot of work. It was really funny, and it actually made sense in the matchup, but I would not necessarily recommend it to most people. Um, so yeah, I'm going to put it pretty low in the C tier. Next up, Rocky Helmet. Now, I have a bit of a love for Rocky Helmet. I think it's S tier, okay? I think it's low S tier, but I think it's S tier. In my eyes, Rocky Helmet doing 17%, 17%, to any contact move is incredible. It basically makes things that need to be two AKOs into two AKOs, or things that would be three AKOs into those two AKOs. Honestly, very, very, very good item. Forces a lot of punishes on U-turns, on really weak knockoffs, on really weak attacks in general. And I just feel like having access to Rocky Helmet is really amazing. One of my favorite Vickavolt sets to run is Rocky Helmet, because a lot of the time people will say, you know, Vickavolt is great. And again, people know I love Vickavolt. Vickavolt is great, but like a lot of these Pokemon that are electric, to, or not electric, but weak to electric attacks, like flying type Pokemon, they just U-turn out on you. Yeah, that's true. Mandibuzz and Corviknight, they U-turn out on me. And Vickavolt's one of my answers to those things. So what do I do? I run Helmet on them. And instead of them now switching out, taking no damage at all, they're not taking 17%, meaning the next time they come in, they're going to get two shots by my big bad breaker. I love Rocky Helmet. Super underrated item. One of my absolute favorites. 
Room service. Room service is B tier. Honestly, probably the higher ranks ranks a B ranks a B tier. Much better in a standard league, in a doubles league rather, than in a standard league. And that's because you have the Pokemon being able to maximize its turns of trick. In general, though, if you can get a trick room that a teleport off like Porygon 2 or another thing like a Mew or whatever, and you can get into a Pokemon that's normally kind of fast, then you have the trick room off, the room service off, you can decimate a team. It's a very, very strong item. Just honestly doesn't have the amount of utility, usefulness, um, usage in general to be able to be in the higher tiers in my eyes. It's, it's on the same level of power as the eject pack is, but because of the usefulness and the amount of times you're gonna be using it, I think eject pack is a bit higher than the room services. Safety goggles. Safety goggles is really cool to deal with a couple of things. One of the things it's really useful to deal with is like sand damage or hail damage, but at the same time, it's also good to avoid like spore or powder moves. It can be really useful in situations. I do find though that it is a good item, super, super niche, and it really depends solely on what one or two Pokemon your opponent has. Amoongus, yeah, no problem. Run safety goggles. Sand, run safety goggles. Sure, no problem. So because of that, I'm putting it in C tier. I'll probably put it in the low C tier, but I'm like mid C tier. Okay, we'll do that. This item here, this is the Salic Berry. Salic Berry is super underrated. One of the better items out there. Endure Salic Berry, super strong. Sub Salic Berry, super strong. Sub Belly Drum Salic Berry, even stronger. Very good item here. I'm gonna put it at the bottom of A tier for the time being. I'll probably move down to B tier after the fact, but we'll see. Next up, this is the Scope Lens. Scope Lens is really good on Pokemon that are getting high crit moves. Really good on like a crit dress set. Kingdra with the crit moves is very good. But other than that, it really doesn't have too much, super much, super much, no, too much utility. So I'm gonna put it in the C tier here. It just doesn't have that much utility in my eyes. The Shed Shell. Really, really good in certain matchups. I think it's actually better in certain matchups than the uh, safety goggles is in certain matchups. And because of that, I'm putting it right into the B tier. Very good item to get through trapping, Gothitelle, whatever. Some uh, even some 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 trapping with like Whirlpool, you can get by with this. I find it to be so damn good in certain situations. Next up, we have the Shell Bell. The Shell Bell. No, not even, not even. D tier, D tier. Why bother? Why bother with the Shell Bell? Like you're getting back no recovery at all and you have to do damage too. It's just not reliable enough at all and you want to have consistency. Building consistency when playing Draft League is really, really important. That's why we practice our games in advance. That's why we build. That's why we have multiple weeks to get comfortable before the playoffs. You want to build consistency. Shell Bell does not give you consistency at all. Citrus Berry. Citrus Berry is really good. I think it's better than the Super Recovery Berries which you're going to see over here in the Agua Berry. I'm going to put it into the A tier. Very good item, even better in doubles. Recovers back 25% of your health when you're at 50% or below, which is really solid overall. Very good item here. Super good to use on a uh, Pokemon like uh, that have Unburden or Pokemon that are running Belly Drum alone or whatever that you want to get the extra recovery back for. This is a very good Pokemon item in general. Next up is the Snowball. Now, the Snowball, exactly what it does. It boosts your attack by one stage if you're by an ice type attack. Why? Why would you need to run this? It's like, I don't understand why. The defense items like Moranga and Keyberry, sure, I get it. Snowball, even less. And Ice is super uncommon. I think, I think honestly, I think the Moss one is worse, but I think Snowball is still pretty bad. Next up, this spiky item. What the hell was this? Was like Sticky Barb, I believe it was? Yeah, Sticky Barb. Sticky Barb is good to, for some unique situation. If you have a really hard time dealing with Halucha, you know what beats Halucha? Sticky Barb. You don't have to worry about it now having max power acrobatics because you have the Sticky Barb attached to it because every time it does a contact move, it then transfers the Sticky Barb over to the next person or next Pokemon, which is super, super useful. I think it's a really good item to have access to. And in general, should see some play, just not so much play. So because of that, I'm gonna put it into the C tier, but low C tier. These items, these items here, they're not gonna see any play, any play. This item here, it might see some play. Throat Spray. I love me some Throat Spray. It just doesn't see enough play, okay? And because of that, I'm gonna put it into C tier. It's a really good item to have access to. It boosts your special attack by one stage when you use a sound type attack, and most sound moves are special. Uh, boosting items like, uh, or going for like a Bug Buzz with Vickavolt and boosting your special attack, amazing. Going for a Clangorous Soul or a, a Clang Scales with Como and boosting your speed or special attack, fantastic. Toxtricity with Boomer, same deal. Very strong here, just not very common. This here, I believe, is the Thick Club, if I'm not mistaken. I should probably double check that. That is the Thick Club. So Thick Club is only good for Marowak and for uh, Cubone, I guess. And considering that Marowak and Cubone, well, Marowak specifically, is good, not great. It's not as good as Silvalli, not as bad as Pikachu. I'm still going to put it in D tier. It's, it's so one-dimensional and it can only be used on one Pokemon for only one thing. It just doesn't provide utility either, which is the problem. So I think it's going to be down in the D tier. I think I said this was Throat Spray here. Where was it? This is Throat Spray. This is not Throat Spray. I think this is like Terrain Extender, if I'm mistaken. 
Uh, yes, Terrain Extender, my bad. So Terrain Extender in general, let's, let's just talk about this again. Throat Spray is over here. If we put Throat Spray up here, Terrain Extender back down. Terrain Extender is good for the, the Tapus like alone, and that's it. And because of that, it could have its use in C tier, but the Cocos, the Cocos, the Tapus terrains aren't that overpowered anymore, to the point where it's like a 1.5 boost in power, it's a 1.3 boost in power. So I don't see it necessarily as being a super useful item. So I'm gonna put it down into like low, low C tier. Actually, no, it'd be, be higher than these items here, that's for sure. Probably be higher than Flame Orb too. So mid, mid C tier, yeah. In general, solid item, just doesn't see any play. Not really gonna be any usefulness to run this because most of the time you're gonna switch your Tapu out, bring it back in. So I feel pretty good about having it over here. Toxic Orb. In my eyes, Toxic Orb is not as good as Flame Orb. Okay, and because of that, I'm still gonna put it into, into, into C tier because D tier is like unplayable. This item here has some utility. Good for like fling, good for trick, good for switcheroo. That's really it though. Okay, that's really it. Or like psycho shift even. So it just doesn't have not enough utility in my eyes to be make be worth this while. This over here, you're like, what the hell is this item here? This is a TR. Okay, just a standard TR, which is there only for fling. And the reason I'm bringing this up, did you know that Toxtricity cannot beat a goaler unless it carries fling? And this has been a pain in my ass. So I'm going to put the TRs up here in the C tier. Low C tier, because it's barely playable, but C tier nonetheless. Utility Umbrella. I have actually ran this in games. It is super situational, super situational. And only works for like sun and, and rain, like that's it. And in very rare situations. But I'm still going to put it into C tier. I'm going to put it higher than the cell battery and stuff like that. Weakness Policy. Just going to say, by the way, it's been a while we put items up in the A or S tier. It's been a while. Damn. Well, weakness policy is going to be A tier. Okay, it is a really good item. Honestly, I'd probably say it's higher than the air balloon, that's for sure. I'd say the salad berry is probably higher than the air balloon as well. Same thing with the citrus berry. Uh, same thing with the red card. But yeah, like air balloon is, is A tier 100% still, but weakness policy, speaking of that, giving yourself a boost plus two in attack. I actually, no, I put it higher up in, in one that, yeah. Give yourself a plus two boost in attack and special attack while taking a super effective attack is insane. Imagine dealing with a weakness policy in a Krosma. Weakness policy, Age of Slash. Those things instill fear into the heart of players. And weakness policy is the reason for that. Putting that thing on those Pokemon makes it really, really hard to break them, especially if they're getting a boost in their speed from like an Autotomize or a Rock Polish or whatever. Really good item here. This is the Wide Lens. Wide Lens and Zoom Lens, both very different items. Both do very similar things though. Wide Lens, what it does is it boosts the accuracy of your moves by 1.1, meaning a 90% accurate move is now 99% accurate, a 70% accurate move like Focus Blast is now 77% accurate. A Zoom Lens, a Zoom Lens, what it does is boost it by two times, so 1.2, which is 20%, but it's not as good because you have to move after your opponent to be able to make it work. Not great. So I'm going to actually put both of these in the D tier. I think they're both unplayable. Why on earth would you run this? Okay, it's again, it's about consistency. And yes, these can give you some consistency, but you're better off running like a damage boosting move than something like this, in my eyes at least. The boost that it gives you for Focus Blast is just like not really even worth it. 7% on the Y lens, 84% on the, on the Zoom lens. Again, just not really worth your while. This here is the Yachi Berry. The Yachi Berry is not just the Yachi Berry. It's every single Resist Berry. Not Resist Berry, Weakness Berry. It's the Trouble Berry. It's the Culver Berry. All those berries there. And to me... This is the only other item that can be in the conversation with boots and with leftover. I think the resist berries are underutilized. They are so damn good and people should prep for them a lot more. Okay. Culver berry, Ross, not Ross berry, Culver berry, Aka berry, Rindo berry, Yachi, Wakan, whatever. These berries are so damn good. And in my eyes, again, I feel like I'm in the minority when I'm saying this. I think it is a better item than everything on this list other than leftovers and boots. My opinion may change. If you guys disagree with me, let me know down in the comments. This has been a long video. It's 40 minutes. Holy shit. Okay. It's a lot of items, but we got through them all. Okay. If you guys want to see more content like this, make sure to leave a like on the video. Of course, subscribe to the channel as well. Give me some suggestions for tier list videos you want to see in the future. I'm excited to make some more of them. I do believe though that I have the best tier list on YouTube. And if you disagree with me and you're a YouTuber, make a video, add me with it. I want to see too, okay? But I believe my list is better than yours, all right? Guys, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, again, leave a like, comment, subscribe. Thank you to my editor, Sunny. That's going to be it. We'll see you next time.